Today we're going to discuss one of the most critical and important topics that we will ever discuss in spirit science. Among all of the things we have discussed, this is one that needs to be taken seriously and is the most important part of the evolution of consciousness that we are experiencing today. Today we shall discuss the power of the heart. Let's just dive right into this. What does the heart have to do with anything? Well, it's pretty much everything. When you're first incarnating at a microscopic level, the physical body starts out as a cell, or as we call it in the geometry world, a sphere. Then you begin to multiply inwards to understand how your own spherical geometry works. Once your sphereness understands itself inwards, it can begin to expand outwards. You soon become a four-celled organism in the form of a tetrahedron. Soon after that, you become a star tetrahedron, which is the egg of life form we discussed in lesson six. From this diagram, it probably looks more like a cube, but if you rotate it, you begin to see the star tetrahedron form. This form is eight cells, which from a metaphysical perspective is the basis of the eight base chakras in the octave of your body. After that, you become a mess of cells for a while, but eventually you become a toroidal field. The space at the very core of that field is where your first actual organ appears, which is the heart. Okay, so the heart is the first organ that appears as you're manifesting into physical reality. What else? Well, the brain and the heart are both electromagnetic field generators, but the heart has a field that is so much more powerful than the brain. In fact, the heart is 100 times electrically stronger and up to 5,000 times stronger magnetically than the brain. This is important because those two fields are the fields that make up the reality we exist within. Electrical and magnetic, electromagnetic fields. We're going to look at the work now of the Institute of HeartMath, which is an organization with over 19 years of research and study on the psychophysiology of stress, emotions, and the interactions between the heart and the brain. The information they have discovered and compiled is revolutionary. On the technical side, the Institute puts a lot of focus into understanding the spaces between the heartbeat, which is called the heart rate variability, or HRV for short. It used to be assumed in science that the heart at rest beat like a metronome, faithfully beating out a steady rhythm. Moment to moment variations of the heartbeat are generally overlooked when your heart rate is being measured by a doctor who will take your pulse and tell you that your heart is beating at say 70 beats per minute. Through the use of a technology called electrocardiogram and EM wave scanners, scientists were able to measure every heartbeat in real time and learn that a healthy heart, even under resting conditions, were actually quite irregular. In a simplified sense, your heart does not beat like clockwork as it was once assumed, but even healthy hearts tend to beat quite irregularly. Why is this important? By understanding how your heart is beating, we begin to have a clearer picture of our adaptability to the environmental and situational demands that we find ourselves in. If your boss at work tells you to do some extra work, your heart will paint a clear picture of how you're reacting. If you're totally cool with it, the heart will maintain the same general flow that it was already going at. If this new information causes you to feel stress, that will be demonstrated by the heartbeat fluctuating into an intense chaotic mess, or somewhere in the middle. Now, these fluctuations in how your heart beats come from a variety of sources and demonstrate our physiological resilience and behavioral flexibility to our experiences. Research done at the Institute of HeartMath has shown that one of the most powerful factors in affecting our heart's changing rhythm is our feelings and emotions. When our varying heart rate is plotted over time, the overall shape of the waveform is called our heart rhythm pattern. HeartMath has demonstrated that the emotions we experience directly affect our heart rhythm pattern, and this, in turn, shows us how our body is functioning. In general, emotions like stress, anger, frustration, and anxiety cause the heart rhythm pattern to become very chaotic like so. This waveform looks like a series of uneven, jagged peaks. Physiologically, this shows us that the heart is not in harmony with itself. This can be likened to driving a car with one foot on the accelerator and the other foot on the brake at the same time possibly while trying to go from first gear to fourth and then back. This creates an incredibly jerky ride, burns more gasoline, and isn't great for the car altogether. Likewise, when your heart is functioning from a place of stress and anxiety, it causes our bodies to operate insufficiently, deplete our energies, and produce extra wear and tear on the whole system. This is especially true if stress and negative emotions are prolonged or experienced often. What about positive emotions? Well, there is a massive visible contrast. 
positive emotions send a very different signal throughout our body. When we experience uplifting emotions like love, appreciation, joy, and care, our heart rhythm pattern becomes a highly ordered, smooth, and harmonious wave. We begin to match the waveforms that are seen in the color spectrum, or perhaps we could liken it to music. This is one aspect of what it means to be more harmonious with nature. And since nature flows through sacred geometry, we are also becoming more aligned consciously with ourselves and the universe around us. It is no wonder that positive emotions feel so good. They actually help our body system become more harmonious and synchronize and work better. The Institute of Heart Math has shown that generating sustained positive emotions facilitates a body-wide shift to a specific scientifically measurable state called psychophysiological coherence. Let's break this down. Psycho comes from psychological, which means mental and emotions, and physiological means body. Coherence is systematic or logical connection or harmony. Altogether, it means a harmony of both body, mind, and emotional functions. If you're familiar with the four elements, you know that earth is the physical, so body, air is mental, mind, water is emotions, and fire is spirit. Heart math has scientifically shown now that positive and healthy emotions bring three of those elements into coherence. And although they don't look at the spiritual aspect, I don't doubt that the fire element also comes into harmony. In an experiment done at the Institute, they hooked up scanners to an individual who was subjected to very chaotic emotions. For 300 seconds, they measured the respiration, heart rate variability, and blood pressure rhythm. After this time, the individual on the scanners did a technique on himself which they have dubbed the heart math quick coherence technique, which activated a feeling of love and appreciation. Instantly, all three of the rhythms came into entrainment and harmony with each other and stayed in harmony for the remainder of the experiment. One important note to stress is that cohesion is not relaxation. The process of relaxation is a low energy state in which the individual rests both body and mind, typically disengaging from cognitive and emotional processes. In contrast, coherence is experienced as a calm and balanced, yet energized and responsive state of being that is optimal for mental acuity, focus, problem solving, and decision making, as well as the physical activity and coordination. So coherence is the natural state you want to be in all the time, you know, un unless you're relaxing. You know, that's, that's good too. <laughs> so how does one get into this state of cohesion? Breathing. Your breath is intimately connected to your heart rate and your heart in general. And if you ever find yourself in a very chaotic mental state, take a few seconds to step back of what's causing the chaos and focus on your breath. Take long and deep breaths. The Institute of Heart Math doesn't put too much focus into particular breathing techniques, but they put an emphasis on using your breath as well as positive and loving emotions to bring you back into a state of cohesion. They say that it's not super necessary to put focus on your breath all the time, but it is very helpful to bring yourself out of chaos and back into alignment. From a spiritual perspective, and if you're working towards that, breath is very important. However, breath is another huge topic, and I personally recommend focusing on your breath during meditations. Focusing on breathing and your heart is a beautiful way to move into a silent space during meditation and deeper into yourself, all while sustaining the same healthy emotions. Now, throughout ancient history, across many, many religions and belief systems, the heart was always considered a center of the being, the source of spiritual wisdom and insight, thought, emotion, and connection to the divine. The ancient Egyptians believed that all thought and life was done from the heart, which is why they threw away the brain after the pharaoh died, but they left the heart in the body. They felt that the being would need it in the next life, so they left it there, but the brain was useless. Western scientific thought places the heart as just a pump. However, in the last several decades, science has begun to go full circle in realizing and understanding what these ancient civilizations knew and taught. In the field of neurocardiology, scientists have discovered that the heart possesses its own intrinsic nervous system, a network of brain cells with over 40,000 neurons. This gives the heart the ability to independently sense and process information and make decisions, even demonstrate a type of learning and memory. In a simplified sense, you can think with your heart. The heart is truly an intelligent system. The heart also has found to be a hormone gland, manufacturing and secreting numerous hormones and neurotransmitters that profoundly affect the brain and body function. Among these hormones is one called oxytocin, well known as the love or bonding hormone, bringing things together. Science is also beginning to understand that the electromagnetic field around the heart has a powerful effect on not just the human body, but others around you as well. Research has also shown that the heart is the key component of the emotional system. 
science now understands that the heart not only responds to emotions, but the signals it sends out dramatically affects the quality of the emotional experience from moment to moment. And also that our heart plays a key role in accessing our intuition. In school, we've been taught that the heart is constantly responding to orders sent from the brain. But what's less commonly talked about is that the brain receives even more orders from the heart. We've been doing it backwards. Moreover, these signals have a significant effect on brain function, influencing emotional processes as well as higher cognitive faculties, such as attention, perception, memory, and problem solving. Guide yourself from your heart, not from your brain. When you allow your negative emotions to get to you, you disconnect from your ability to think clearly, remember things, learn lessons, reason, and make effective decisions. Which explains why often we act impulsively and unwisely under stress. The heart's signal has a profound effect on the brain during positive and negative emotions. Live in your heart, for the heart is the center of unity consciousness, where the brain is the center of duality consciousness. You can see that right in how they're made. The brain has the two hemispheres. The heart is a place of unity. Since we fell in consciousness, we moved from heart consciousness and into our brains, and all decisions were made from the brain. In doing so, we became polarized and lost our connections to the universal consciousness called unity. This shift in consciousness we are experiencing now is a movement from the brain and back into the heart, where we will once again know and understand the universe and unconditional love for everyone and all things, regardless of who they are or what damage they've done to themselves or others. And this is why the heart is so important right now. Live in your heart. It is the gateway to the divine. Oh